Manu and the Talking Fish, written and illustrated by Roberta Aronson. A long time ago in India lived a prince called Manu. Manu often wondered about the mysteries of the world around him. He wondered why the wind blew. He wondered where the sun slept at night. And he wondered what the birds were singing about. Every day, Mano went down to sit by the river Ganges and think. One day, as he sat by the river, he heard a voice. Help me, the voice cried. Mano looked around, but he could see no one. Help me, the voice called again. Then, with a sudden splash, a little fish poked his head up out of the water. Please help me. A big fish is chasing me and wants to have me for his supper. If you help me, I will help you in return. Manu sprang to his feet and scooped the fish up out of the river and into a small bowl. He filled the bowl with water and carried the fish home to his palace. So, said Manu, how can a little fish like you help me? Look around at my palace. What help do I need? The fish gave a little chuckle, for he was really the god Brahma in disguise. You have often wondered about the mysteries all around you, he said. Not only am I a talking fish, but I can see the future. If you promise to keep me alive, I will tell you about all these things. Manu was very curious about his future, so he gave the fish his promise. The fish soon grew too big for the small bowl. He asked to be moved to a larger one, and then to an even bigger one. When he had grown too big for all the bowls in the palace, he asked to be taken back to the river Ganges. As time passed, even the river Ganges could no longer hold the fish. Please, take me to the sea, the fish said, and Manu kept his promise. When the fish was happily in the sea, he spoke. Now I can tell you what I know. A flood is coming soon, and all the world you have wondered about so much will be destroyed. First... You must build a large boat. Then you must gather seeds from all the trees and plants you can find and gather up all the birds and the animals and tell the seven wise men from the ends of the earth to be ready to go with you. Manu set about building his boat. It had to be big enough to carry everything. Then he gathered the seeds and bulbs of many kinds of trees and fruits and vegetables. And Manu called to every animal to come with him. There were lions and elephants, snakes and birds, monkeys and cows, giraffes and turtles, and the seven wise men came from the ends of the earth as well. On the day that Manu finished the boat, it began to rain. It rained, and it rained, and it rained. Everything was covered by the water. Everything but Manu's boat, which was carried out to sea. The giant fish, which was now bigger than the boat, called out from the sea to Manu. Tie a rope to my back, and I will guide you. While the waves crashed all about them, the fish easily pulled Manu's boat along. Many days passed, and many nights too. Manu could not tell the difference because there was no sun, or moon, or stars. It rained all the time, and everything was dark. Finally, the boat came to rest on the highest mountain peak. The fish instructed Manu to tie the boat to the tree at the top of the mountain. At long last, the rain stopped and the sun came out. 
The waters began to go down. The giant fish spoke to Manu again. I must leave you now, but come to the sea after you have settled and built a new home. Manu planted all the seeds and bulbs he had carried on his boat. He set the animals free and built a new home. Then he and the seven wise men offered thanks to the gods with milk. One day, the beautiful woman arose out of the milk, and she became Manu's wife. They had many children together, and so filled the earth once more with people. Manu was often seen sitting by the edge of the sea. He sat quietly, listening to the sound of the waves and the wind. Or maybe he was listening to the wise voice of his old friend, the talking fish. What do you think? Artist Note Tales of a deluge or flood are found in the literature and oral traditions of almost every culture. They tell of a time when the earth is suddenly covered by water, when the old is washed away so the new can emerge. Manu and the Talking Fish is my retelling of the ancient Indian deluge story from Hindu mythology. I first came across the Manu tale in Veronica Ion's Indian mythology, and this particular account became the source for my own adaptation of the story. In this version, it is the god Brahma who is disguised as the talking fish. In variations of this myth, it is the god Vishnu who takes on this disguise. At least two sources from classical Indian literature contain stories of Manu and the Flood. According to Funk and Vagnall's Standard Dictionary of Folklore, Mythology, and Legend, versions of the tale are found in the Satapata Brahmana and the Mahabharata. The tale of Manu predates that of his biblical counterpart, Noah. I'm fascinated by the Hindu concept of time. The universe is conceived as evolving through vast cycles of creation and destruction, where in a single day, or kalpa, is the equivalent of 4,321,000,000 years. During each kalpa, 14 floods occur. According to tradition, it is the hero Manu who survives each of these floods and initiates the renewal of life. Heinrich Zimmer, in his illuminating myths and symbols in Indian art and civilization, has noted that the interval between each flood, called a Manvantara, is named after Manu. 